Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's May the 22nd and we're looking at 2 Chronicles and chapter 4. In chapter 4 we find that Solomon furnishes the temple. It's not enough to have a building. One also has to have items of furniture in the building. And he begins with the altar of brass. This was 20 cubits long and 20 cubits wide and 10 cubits high. Now, um, this was a huge, huge altar made of brass, made of made of bronze, I think would be the right phrase. And it was designed for the burning of animals. Um, and you could get upon it a whole um, you could get upon it a whole bull that's how big it was um, he also made a molten sea so this is a huge um, um, container of water um, and uh, it was carried on two it was carried on 12 oxen uh, stands that looked like 12 oxen it was the thickness of a hand breadth so a hand breadth is four inches so it was four inches thick um, and it had 3,000 baths, that's how much water it contained. He also made 10 lavers. Now a laver is a small bowl for washing in. He also made 10 candlesticks of gold and put them in the temple. The temple was vast. The temple was huge and therefore it needed light. And so there were 10 candlesticks. Notice uh, there weren't 12 or 5, there were 10 candlesticks. Um, it's very interesting the particular details that are given. It tells us often the weight. It tells us all of the. Um, um, it tells us all of the um, details of each of the items of the furniture. He also made ten tables. He also made a hundred basins of gold. Um, he made the court of the priests and the great court and the the doors for the court, and overlaid the doors with brass on the right and he set the sea on the right hand side on the east end over against the south and Hiram made pots and shovels and basins he also made two pillars to go at the front of the temple um, he made uh, flesh hooks and he made all of the instruments and he made them in the clay of the ground um, on the plain of Jordan. In the plain of Jordan there was a lot of clay and that's where he was able to do the maltings. Um, and so the <clears throat> and so all the items were made and uh, they were all brought by Solomon um, and they were they were they were brought into the temple they were all provided all the materials were provided by David but all the work was supervised by Solomon and he put them all into the treasury of the house of God then the chapter 5 verse 2 Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes and the chiefs of the fathers um, um, unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the God out of the city of David which is Zion wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast that was in the seventh month and all the elders of Israel came and the Levites took up the ark and they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle these did the priests and the Levites bring up verse 7 the priests brought in the ark of the covenant into his place to the or to the oracle of the house into the most holy place even under the wings of the cherubim um, <clears throat> when the when the ark was put in there they drew out the staves of the ark uh, that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle but they were not seen without and they and they are there unto this day so the person that's writing this is writing it um, um, during the time when the temple was standing he says they are there unto this day there is nothing in the ark inside the ark of the covenant except the two tables of, that Moses put therein at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt now I want you to notice this 
It's very important we understand verse 10. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel. The old covenant um, based upon the tablets of stone was not made with all the world. Okay, now all the world was already in a covenant with God. It was the Noah covenant. And all the people of the world understood that. And they understood what it was to be righteous before Jehovah God on the basis of the covenant with Noah. However, this was a different covenant. This was only made with the children of Israel. Um, and it's when they came up out of Egypt. You see, this is very specific. It's not made with all human beings. And then if we go on down. <clears throat> um, and uh, when, when everything was brought in, uh, they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music. And they praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Now this was very unique to Israel. No other nation ever had anything of this thing. This was the glory of Israel, that they had the privilege of setting up a house of God. Now in chapter 6 we have Solomon's speech. Then said Solomon, the Lord hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built a house of habitation for thee, a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath made who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house in, that now my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be ruler over my people Israel, but I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel <clears throat> and then he explains that it was in David's heart to build the temple but the Lord gave the job to uh, Solomon then he says in verse 11 he talks about the ark of the covenant he says in it I have put the ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel so this is something that only applies to those that are the circumcised of the family of Jacob. They are the children of Israel. And then in verse 12 we have the beginning of Solomon's prayer. We notice that Solomon had made a brazen scaffold, five cubits long and five cubits broad, three cubits high, and set it in the midst of the court. And on it he stood and kneeled upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and stretched forth his hand toward heaven. And this is what he says. Now, when we read through this prayer, <clears throat> what we're going to notice is that Solomon explains how this old covenant works. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that every single human being that is a descendant of Jacob and one of the children of Israel, as we might call them, every single person is in this covenant. Nobody is outside of this covenant. Nobody gets converted into this covenant. Uh, this covenant is not salvation as Christian salvation is. It's a covenant that God made through Moses with the children of Israel. And it's based upon the commandments of the Lord. Um, he says, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like unto thee in heaven or in earth, which keepest covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Now, <clears throat> this covenant is a covenant with the whole of Israel. And it is assumed that the whole of Israel will walk before the Lord with all their hearts. However, now Solomon is going to explain and he's going to ask the Lord how to deal with Israel um, when they sin against him and when the judgments of God fall. He says, 
O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in thy sight to sit upon the throne of Israel. Yet so that thy children may take heed to their way to walk in my law, as thou hast walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God indeed dwell? on earth behold heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee how much less this house which i have built you see solomon understood that the god who's the god of the heaven of heavens is not able to be fully contained within a small building no matter how vast the temple was um but he does understand um, he, he asked the Lord that his eyes will be open to this house day and night and upon this place which thou hast said that thou wouldst put thy name there. Uh, a place for supplications, a place for prayers. Um, then he goes on in verse 22. He says, if a man sin against his neighbour and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear from heaven and do and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked and by recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. So, so this was a place where judgment would be made upon the good and the bad do deeds of the individual men of Israel. So if a wicked man has to appear before the Lord, then the Lord will judge him according to his wickedness. And if a righteous man appears before the Lord, the Lord will judge him according to his righteousness. And what is the standard of righteousness? Well, the standard of righteousness is the law that the Lord gives for Israel to live under. He says, and if thy people be put to the worst before an enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall return and confess thy name and pray and make supplication in this house then hear from heavens and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again into the land which thou gavest them and to their fathers so this is another case first of all we dealt with a man when he sins now he's dealing with a whole army in Israel that have sinned against the Lord um, and then verse 26 and when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee yet if they pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin and so on then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel which thou hast taught them the good way and wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. Now, what you, I want you to understand is that there's no conversion. There's no individual conversion here. However, there can be an individual repentance. Now, repentance means to have an afterthought, to think again. And when Israel sins against the Lord and they see the judgment of God coming maybe there's uh, no rain or maybe they get sick or maybe an enemy comes into the land this would be a judgment of God when they see these things they are to repent they're to think again about what they've done and they are to pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin and then the Lord will hear from heaven and forgive the sin of the servants and of the people of Israel. So <clears throat> this is the way in which Israel has its relationship with their covenant God. They are all in the covenant, but they can forsake the Lord as a nation and they can forsake the Lord as individuals. In verse 28, the formula for all of these are all, all identical all down through the passage. If there be a dearth in the land, if there be a pestilence, if there be a blasting, or mildew or locusts or caterpillars um, <clears throat> if their enemies besiege them in the cities and listen to this whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be then what prayer or supplications whoever shall be made of any man or of all thy people 
when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands and then hear thou from heaven etc 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 so <clears throat> Israel never got sick unless they forsook the Lord and the land was always fruitful unless they forsook the Lord and when they did forsake the Lord when they did when they did sorry when they did repent when they thought again about where they were then they prayed to this place they prayed to the Lord God and the Lord delivered them the nearest thing they have to salvation where we can use that word is the salvation of deliverance from the judgments of God as a result of their unfaithfulness and verse 31 um, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gave unto our fathers he also says in verse 32 concerning the stranger now there will be strangers people who are not part of the actual family of Israel not part of the children of Israel when they come and they pray to this house and they do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all the people of the earth may know thy name and fear thee as thy people Israel and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name <clears throat> and then he says and if they if thy people go to war against thy enemies by the way um, and that thou send them and they pray unto thee towards this house and so on then hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause and if they sin against thee see this is the thing for there is no man which sinneth not in brackets and thou be angry and deliver them to their enemies and they carry them away captives into a land far off or near then if they be bethink themselves in the land now that if they bethink themselves it is if they repent themselves you see if they think again um in the land where thou hast carried them captive and turn and pray unto thee now the turning is the conversion and the bethinking is the repentance and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity saying we have sinned and we have done amiss and we have dealt wickedly if they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity whether thou hast carried them captives and pray towards this land which thou gavest unto thy fathers and towards the city which they have ch which thou hast chosen then then thou from then hear thou from the heavens even from thy dwelling place their prayer and their supplication and maintain their course and forgive thy people which which have sinned against thee so here we have the whole thing spelled out you see the ministry of the Lord Jesus and the ministry of John the Baptist and of the apostles is within the context of this in the lifetime of the Lord Jesus it wasn't Christian the truth that the Lord Jesus was teaching it was old covenant theology because Israel had forsaken the Lord their God that's why the Romans were in the land they had forsaken the Lord their God and that's why the land is full of sickness um, this is why there was a dearth this is why there was a famine there was a famine for wine famine for the vine that's why the vine the wine had run out at Cana of Galilee you see there was a general famine why because they had forsaken the Lord their God and what did the Lord Jesus come to do he came that he might call upon Israel to return to the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their soul and the Lord in heaven would hear them and would deliver them from their judgments um, <clears throat> and so this is um, this isn't something I'm making up you see Israel were never in a Christian relationship with God now that can be proven by a very simple point we know from Hebrews and we know from Jeremiah that in a future day um, Israel will come into a new covenant he says I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah so this is the two houses of Israel 
And he says, what one of the aspects of the new covenant will be, he says, and your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. So the Lord Jesus is going to gather all of the children of Israel that are alive. And he will also gather all those that had passed on. So they'll be all resurrected from the dead and they'll stand before God and they will be forgiven of all their sins for all eternity. Now, <clears throat> clearly, in the Old Testament, they were unable to have that sort of forgiveness. Um, in the Old Testament, their sins were covered. They weren't taken away. Um, because um, only in the new covenant will their sins be completely taken away. So um, th they cannot be Christians. They cannot be anything like us. They certainly are not under grace. They're under law. And they don't have the complete forgiveness of sins. They have a temporary covering of their sin, uh, whereby their, a sacrifice, a sin offering is made, and their sin is put out of sight. So here we have the great temple of Solomon. It's great to talk to you. Look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Any questions you might have about any of these things, just post a question and we'll try and answer them to the best of our ability. God bless you. Bye for now.